gather today on this, the second Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of peace. We will begin our service with the lighting of the Advent wreath candles, the first two candles for Advent. Today, we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has meaning. The first candle we lit last week was the candle of hope. And now, we light the second candle, the candle of peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. Let us now pray together. 
Almighty God, you offer rest to our hearts and peace for our souls. Give us grace to see peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace in the world. Through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. I welcome all those who are joining us here for our in-person worship, but those who will join us online as well. Apologies that there will be no car park service simply because I have been struggling with a bit of back pain and the logistics are a bit challenging, but hopefully we will be able to gather in the parking lot again for the third Sunday of Advent. I want to also extend a warm welcome again to Jean, who celebrates his birthday today exactly. I know Lynn will be next week, but I am thankful and we are thankful for all of the support he has given. Um, just to acknowledge this morning, I was providing moral support, but members of the parish, um, Richard, Tom, Clovia, Joy, and Yvonne, were here and they put up the decorations here and the lights on the outside, which I am anticipating you will see as we leave the parish. I'm sorry, as we leave the service. But now our service will continue on page 355 of the prayer book following the introductory sentence. Strive to be found by him at peace without a spot or blemish. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we proclaim together glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. The first lesson is an Old Testament lesson from Isaiah 40, 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. 
Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up. To a high, O Zion, herald of good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arms rule for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep, the word of the Lord. The psalm of today is Psalm 85, 1 and 2 and 8 through 13. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good, good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle comes from the New Testament, 2 Peter 3, 8 through 15. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed." Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, 
we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. to receive the Holy God our gradual hymn will continue along the same theme and make me a channel of your peace The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. At the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and it is written in the prophet Isaiah, see, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong on his sandals. I have baptized you with water, 
but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated. Today, it's the second week of Advent, and as we said earlier, the first week we lit the Advent wreath candle of hope. Personally, last weekend, I was hoping that my sciatic pain would go, and I still keep faith and cautiously give thanks for some strong medication, but encourage you also to continue with whatever challenges to keep this Sunday we lit the candle of peace and when we think about it one of the most enduring images of Christmas is the nativity scene one of those we have here displayed and one of the things that resonates in the nativity scenes is that all seems to be peaceful it's hard to conjure up a more peaceful image. This possibly sunrise on Hollywood Beach is equally competitive. But that image of Joseph and Mary with their newborn in the manger, surrounded by animals and the shepherds in the midnight sky. And think we even sing about it in the most tranquil of carols, Silent Night holy night, all is calm, all is bright. But if we stop for a moment and really think about this, for the mothers and the fathers here, for the relatives of friends who have been part of a real birth narrative, you know the reality is completely different. A delivery room, which I had the experience of being in twice and that was enough for me, is far from calm. Anxiety levels are high, blood pressure is up, and some forgivable harsh words can sometimes be exchanged. But worse yet, if there are complications. But these uncertainties don't just surround childbirth. 2020 has been for all of us the most surreal. Between the COVID-19 pandemic and the racism pandemic and now the contested elections, the loss of Easter and Thanksgiving celebrations and a Christmas that we know is going to have to be also equally scaled back. The spirit of hope and peace and love and joy is under immense pressure this year. But that is when our Lord Jesus Christ really comes in to the picture. Because he is not only our peace, the Prince of Peace, he is, sorry, he is not just our hope, but he is our peace as well. And this is what that second advent candle of peace is all about. That to reminder to us that our Lord brings us peace. Peace with God. Peace within ourselves and with others. And ultimately, peace on earth. 
in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 speaks about this notion of our Lord bringing peace with God and it says therefore we have been justified through faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ the Bible tells us and our Eucharistic prayer reminds us that because of our sins we were separated from God and it is only only through our Lord Jesus Christ that we are reconciled to God the Father of all in the gospel today speaking about the need for preparation the focus is on John the Baptist and we are told in Luke chapter 1 that when he the Baptist was born his father Zachariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied about what his role would be and we heard it today in Mark chapter 1 of what the role of John the Baptist would be I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight but one thing that Mark omits that Matthew includes goes on to say in Luke sorry to guide your feet into the path of peace and how how does our Lord reconcile and bring peace to us with God we know that we know he does it to what he accepts on the cross for us to die so that our sins are forgiven and we are restored to the right relationship of peace with the Father in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 we are told he was pierced for our transgressions and was crushed for our iniquities the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed by his wounds we are healed and that is the first and the most important message of the advent candle of peace to remind us that our Lord brings peace to us with the Father but he also brings peace within us and with others because we know this is important because sin not only separates us from God but it separates us from ourselves it causes conflict we are constantly fighting stress and anxiety and inner turmoil because of the things we have done or failed to do which we know go against the will of God and because of that we desperately need inner peace and our Lord allows us to find that peace within ourselves in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 he instructs us do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition present your request to God and I want to say here and now how much I appreciate the prayers and the support not just this week but continually for my ministry for those who have adopted me into your homes and your hearts and your lives and this parish it means everything to me as we transition and try to make this space home that love that peace that y'all share with me and that we share with one another 
when I speak to members of this parish and call around and they say to me, so-and-so has called me, or I spoke to so-and-so, and especially for those who are home alone, it means everything. Those small calls, it brings peace to people. They know they are not alone. In John chapter 14, verse 7, our Lord gives words of blessed assurance. He says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. This has been an unprecedentedly difficult year. People have lost lives. Today in Barbados, our dear friend Barry, who the first we lost the COVID from this parish, was interred in Barbados finally. And I, I was able to, to join the service online. There has been pain and devastation amongst us. People have lost jobs. People have lost livelihoods and lifestyles. Everyone is feeling it. And we can feel pressure in our home and within ourselves. And our Lord is there to enter those difficult spaces and help us resolve and get through the challenges of life that all of us are facing at this moment. Because all of us in different ways and sometimes we are not even aware of those stresses. God is there. Our Lord is with us and all we have to do is remember as we are told in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14, He is our peace and in his flesh he has made all into one and has broken down the dividing walls, any hostility between us. So if you are feeling that stress of life at this time, Know that you are not alone. But God tells us, do not be anxious about anything. Prayer and petition. Know that he is there. But equally important, know that your parish family and your friends are there as well. And when you are feeling pressure in relationships, turn to the Prince of Peace and ask him to intercede to break down any dividing walls or any hostilities that may exist. And ultimately, and what we aspire to in this season is for our Lord to bring peace on earth. In Luke chapter 2 verse 13, we are told, suddenly there was the with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those he favors. This is the peace that the prophet Isaiah whom we follow through Advent speaks about. He says he will come and he will beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks. And Isaiah tells us this child who was born, who will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is what we aspire to. We are not there yet, but that is part of our hope and that is part of our peace. And we will look on to the joy and the love of Advent. And we hold them all together within us, knowing that these things will be fulfilled in Christ Jesus. All will be fulfilled. So as we focus in Advent on that preparation, that preparation for the coming. We know that our Lord brings peace. He brings peace to us with God, brings peace within us with ourselves and others, and ultimately, He brings peace to the world. As we are told in Colossians 
chapter 3 verse 15 let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts since as members of one body and that is the body of Christ we are called to peace I know one of the things that all of us miss in these services is that exchange of peace when we know we share that love with each other but we have to do it virtually and sometimes with social distance but let us keep that peace real let us keep that peace alive within us and share it with one another and as we journey towards God let us ask ourselves do we have that peace with God do we have that peace within ourselves and with others are we at peace at this moment and if we aren't take your worries and your concerns to God and know that he will be there and when he needs to he will send somebody we have a saying in, in the Caribbean God doesn't come but he sends and basically when things really are bad um, God will find a way to intercede and I ended up at Memorial this week because of backache and one of the members of the parish called me well didn't call me because and I keep telling people feel free to call you don't have to just text I love to hear people's voices I am I like to interact but someone sent a text to me and said I booked an appointment with you with an orthopedic specialist for Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And I was saying to them, because I was saying to someone, I don't know where to turn. I don't know anyone. God doesn't come, but he sends. So whenever you are feeling uncertain about anything, know that if you put your trust in him, he will deliver. He will deliver. So as the angels proclaimed to the shepherds on that first Christmas Eve, peace on earth and goodwill to all, let us hold on to that promise. Let it ring in our ears and in the air as we come together to adore our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Son of God, the Prince of God peace may peace come into our hearts and may we may we continue to believe in him and adore him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Amen Let us now stand and profess our faith in our triune God, a God who brings peace in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer up the prayers of the people, let us open our minds, our hearts, our souls, and us invite God to come in and give us peace. Let us pray. Found on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, the welfare of the Holy Church of God, the Episcopal Church of Spain, our sister parishes, Exuma, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Michael, Holy Innocents, and Chapel of St. Andrew, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Bernie, our rural dean, Guy and Mario, our priests, and for all the clergy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Ron, our governor, Josh, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the county of Broward, this city of Hollywood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For social barriers which divide to crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease that our divisions are healed and we live in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially those listed on our prayer, parish prayer list. Mary Rodriguez, Abby Watts, Stan Allen Jr., Sarah Allen, Nicholas and Jonathan Saunders, Heather and Ed Reed, Riley Rupert Rickendaller, Rodney Paisley, Cecilia Griffith, Angelica Williams, Cecile Patricia James, Zachary and Isaiah Williams, Margaret Reisig, Nicole Goodwin, Pat Miller, Reynaldo Schaefer, Cedric Straker, Stephanie and Jackson Gomez, Theodora Juracon, Yvette Baker, Jackie and James Lowe, Zoila Barath, Veronica Gatto, Maud Fernander, Jean Safer, John Lucky Lee, Jan Pushkar, Roberta Grimmer, Richard McDonald, Rudy Ford, and Barbara Becker. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays, Ivy Reynolds, Lynn Bliss, and Victoria Oden. For those celebrating anniversaries, and for anyone or anything which you care to mention. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the homeless and clients of the Jubilee Center, the people of Madagascar, particularly the women and children, the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, and for all those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord our God, our prayers. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that we, thy servants, who now live by faith in hope and with peace, may with joy behold thy Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as an act of penitence, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of my brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us continue to share God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Again, um, please be seated. Just a few announcements. Um, again, best wishes to Jean and to Lynn who are with us. And again, my thanks to everyone who has helped me prepare the, the church for Advent. It's really looking lovely and I do love this color. It is truly delightful. Um, we did not, or we could not start the, or I couldn't lead the Bible study this Friday, last Friday, Thursday as planned, but we will resume with the plan for that this Friday, God willing, and we will send out details um, by constant contacts for the Zoom link. Please join us. 
Um, I wanted to say, uh, to, to thank Lorreen Clark's mom, Mrs. Vera Higgs. Um, she's been helping Lorreen send out these mailings for the Sunday school for Advent, and one had come out early in autumn and one um, around Easter. And sometimes we, we don't stop to say thanks for the small things. And I wanted to thank her because every time, as I say, that's the small tokens of love that we share with each other, I know are so meaningful. So it's my way of just saying thanks to her for doing a big thing in a very small and, and quiet way. Um, the notices are there and they're circulated, so I won't go into them any further. But just to say, as I said, it means everything to have the support that I get from you all. I truly appreciate it. As we go in to prepare for our communion, we will be led in by the hymn, Let There Be Peace.
Please stand for the doxology. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may be without shame or fear, rejoicing to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic Prayer A. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, 
in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy and peace and that the last days bring us with the Blessed Virgin, St. James and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our, sacrifice, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Yeah. Let us for and let us keep peace. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us now give thanks for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet by praying together the post-communion prayer on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow your heads to receive God's blessing. The sun of righteousness shine upon you Gladden your hearts and scatter the darkness before you and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, our service has ended, so let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be